Broadstock. I'm the author of Cameroglyphics, which allows you to read Egyptian hieroglyphs. Surprising, true, and easy to do. You just use the Welsh language. Discovered by Wilson and Blackett. Well, discovered a couple of hundred years ago, but proven by them. So this lesson, I say lesson, this short video is uh, a bit of fun. This is about writing your name in hieroglyphics. Because once you realise that each symbol is a word, and names are sort of like acronyms, they use the initials. Said in the first video, NATO is using the first letters of the four words North Atlantic Treaty Organisation. So you can spell any word, you just need to pick out something from each letter <clears throat> that matches the word you're trying to spell. So that's all easy peasy, and we've been going through that. Which also is a quick word, uh, which we'll start off with about uh, the alphabet. Because really, the alphabet doesn't make much sense because it's not an alphabetical system. And yet, you'll see t shirts and tea towels all over the place with the sort of picture you'll see on the first slide. So, a little bit about that. So, I hope you enjoy this one. Good fun. And it gives you a good insight to how the words work and how you can use this system yourself. And once you see how it's you do write, what they wrote a few thousand years ago makes a lot more sense because you can see how they had to go through what seems to be this very process makes reading hieroglyphs so much easier and then and now i've got the technical issues sorted out sorry for the delay with this one hopefully just about every day we put a new one up and we can look at pictograms uh, how the other translations work reading texts titles special symbols hidden meanings all sorts it'd be great so i hope you enjoy this one and here we go and this is what you'll see a conventional uh, alphabet if you type in egyptian hieroglyphs alphabet table something like that you get something like this this is twinkle thank you for twinkle it's a free download it's educational software and here we are educating so i'm sure they haven't got a problem with that now what they're trying to make out here is that all these represent letters which doesn't really make any sense when you think about it it's not an alphabetic um, system. If it was, these would be the only symbols you would ever see. Same as you only ever see these symbols in what we call alphanumerics. And also, the other thing is, why why do they call this um, A? Why is that A? Well, in Welsh, a bird is A ah, derin. There's the A ah sound. We've got bear for leg. There's a B sound. This, I'm afraid to say, is just a mistake. Um, this is the S, and you can see it here, S. So why it appears twice, I don't know. But <laughs> as it warns us, which I quite like, watch out for the symbol that can mean two different letters. You'll have to think carefully about which one it must be when you read the messages containing this hieroglyph. So they are, watch out for that, because it can have two meanings. Oh, hang on, it's got another one over here. <laughs> it's got three. So even that's not quite right. So here we go. So as we see on the first video, you've got things like um, the flat hand or the fist is durdio, which gives you the, um, to punch or to chide, you know, to uh, punish, threaten. This is Eden, the corn, which also you'll see down here. We've got two of those, which I would say is a double E. Why it suddenly becomes an uh, it is a bit difficult to uh, to figure. And I don't know why it says the symbol with two different letters. We've got another one here, look. We got the cut, and this gives us our X, of course, which we're aware of, which is a cut and a S. Now, this difference between cut and cut is an English thing. There's no difference in hieroglyphs or in Welsh. They're both just a hard cut. There's no soft cut. For a soft cut, you've got the S sound. You've got a S. So that's we got a X. They've also similarly here. Like you've got this little chick or little thing. Is it a or a what? And we come on to those. Both neither is quite right. <laughs> And here's another one repeated. We got the snake here and a snake there. Now, if you look at this snake, there's one thing unusual about it. They call it a viper in the standard uh, versions, conventional. But what's this thing? This the way this exaggerated horns on his top, and that's the key. This fork. There's a fork up on here in Welsh fork, and that gives you the v, the f. Now in Welsh there is uh, no v. You have a single F is a V sound, and double F is a F sound. But to all intents and purposes, um, what we're doing, the V or F will work fine. 
A um, few of these then we can talk about, we'll go through in more detail. Some of the ones you've already become familiar with from the introduction. There's the R, then it in nice red, actually looks more like a mouth. As we say, it's proclaiming, so it's Roch. There's our T, our Titian lap, our T for you are. Um, there's the fastening bolts. So that's a S, which is, there's no Z, there's no Z. So this is a Sikrai to fasten, so it's Si. That's Segan for cloak, so that's a Se. So Se and Si are different roots. But when you look through the dictionary, there's actually loads of symbols for each word. I mean, I should just, uh, I should put a slide of this up on there. But if, for example, I get dictionary out in front of me, in front of the back of the book, we got the first one is, um, what have we got here? We got Aberth, which is to give, and it's a hand with a gift in it. And then we've got um, Loaded, so we've got Ach Lloith, which gives Ach then we got the bird, of course, the Adavile, as you can see there, Adavile, which gives us our promise and our pledge. Anyway, there's a whole list of words. And in theory, you could use any of those for A. And what you'll find different uh, ancient hieroglyphs, they will do that. But the key to remember throughout all this is all of these are words. When it's a lion, it's a lion, it's Hlu. And Hlu can give the enlightenment or abundance. You know, this is an owl. Owl actually begins with D, not M, and is a reason why they've got the wrong uh, symbol there. But I would argue it's the wrong sim symbol, and we can explain why they chose M and why the mistake is. It comes down to Mulloch, which is um, wrong reasoning. But anyway, come to that another time. So just a quick little refresher on that. And here's this um, bizarrely drawn version of the olives. Uh, well, I've got two. Anyway, that's supposed to be olives, and there's the O, olive-eyed. Okay. So these are all words, remember that, and these are sort of initials. Here's another funny one. You got the first letter of Cleopatra, if you remember it from the introduction. The K, the beginning of Cleopatra. So that's now become a Q. So I suppose it's sort of a K, it's like a Q. But there we are, but, you know, uh, so that's a K and that's a K, both of these. As we see in some of the other spellings, like here, Alexander. And there's a unusual depiction of it, but it looks a bit more like a door there. When you come to the pa in Porth. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do first of all, a bit of fun with spelling names. Here's some extracts from the dictionary as I go through. Just to give you a little idea of how it works. Here's a nice easy one. Here's Kair, because that's like a fence going around a field. So field, a uh, fenced in fields, Kai, Kai, place field. Sometimes you haven't got to do anything. And thank goodness, because some of them are just exactly what you see. And that's what saved Egyptology a bit over the last 200 years. So let me just get them right because that's what you can see, all right? Now, I'm going to do my name first as an example. I think I hinted about this in the first video. So it's, my first name is Kelvin, which is Welsh. Uh, in Welsh, it would be spelt C-E-L, like we see here, Kel. And then F-Y-N for the reasons we just gave. That, uh, the V, there's no V in Welsh. Just F Y N C E L F Y N. My parents gave me a kind of um, hotchpotch. They anglicised it a bit with a K at the beginning. But it should be C E L F Y N. All right. So, um, so no one's ever spelt my name right. So what I have here is the bucket, which or a basket or a container, which can be with the little handle or without the little handle. Both means the same. Which is a kethlun. From now to get kel, is to conceal or shelter or kethli you could argue is deity. Having now gone through lots of examples, you'll see it's that one. Oh, these references I put here, this M stands for Moses in the hieroglyphs. So if you want to look up where Wilson and Blackett originally derived it, Moses in the hieroglyphs, page 236, and then you can see the page and the text where it came from and the, the context, and check it for yourself, see if it makes sense. Um, I'm not trying to be too provocative here, but if you look at, um, if we were to get yourself a standard, just get one, anyone, I'll, I'll guarantee you that whichever one you get, all the modern books, when you see a symbol and a definition next to it, for a start you'll see loads of possible definitions, and the other thing is there's no reference for any of them, there's no explanation, and that's the big problem. Like when we look at the last slide, look at the bird, and that represents an A, ah. no idea why it's an A, ah. well in Welsh, A ah, darin, it, that's the A ah sound. 
If you don't know what the words are, you don't know the R words, you don't know the language, you're just guessing. All right. So if I'm doing my name, Kelvin, Ke is Kel. I need a V. So here's our little forked chappy there. Little fork. All right. Forked viper. Fork. So from fork, I get four or fourth, which is the way. Which is the way. Okay. So you get the way. All right, just give you more of an idea. This is uh, blown up extracts from the dictionary. Now then, I've got a choice now. All these possible uh, uh sound, because the Y in Welsh is an uh sound. So you've got a choice of all these, you've got a little scan through while you're here. Now, as I'm involved in books and writing and all this kind of stuff, I'm going to go for this one. So I can choose this, because this represents writing. This is a more ab abstract way of showing writing. You got very similar a scroll, which in Welsh is similar again then, because you've got a scrividiaid, which is of writings, which again is very similar to this. You got very similar um, roots here. This Alan Wilson thinks implies it's recorded. So again, it's a scriven, but it's cov a scriven, recorded. So uh, I'd probably avoid that one if I was using um, initials or spelling a name, because it could be the cut or the a. Uh. Well, I'll go for this one. I like this one. It's quite artistic. So I'm going to go with that one. And then I need a nut to put on the end. And here's a whole range of nuts. And the, the, the real dictionary's got much more. There's a couple of pages of nut words. Here's a nice one. This baboon that you see quite often. Baboon ape, we get noi. Noyo is to long, long for, to covet. And here's the large snake. The one they've got down is, a, I think that's a J. I think you look at some of the older books, they have it as a N D J, like a J sort of sound. But anyway, here comes this NIDA, and it's, this one is really useful. We'll see that a lot when we go through hieroglyphs. It's a negative. So it's na or NIDE, and it just means not. So you put this around something, or and it says it's not this. So an example, you'll see that with an earth or something below it, and say not of this earth. You know, you're a god, or you're a mortal. Um, oh, we've got an example here. This is slightly different then. We'll come on to that. Anyway, I'm going to go for this one here. we got to keep Novio, which is, uh, oh, I put the English on there. Anyway, we got float, swim, Novio, no, oh, there's English. All right. So we got uh, to preserve or keep. And then my second name, Ross, Kelvin Ross Broadstock. So we got Ross. So as you know from the last one, there it is, what, dwell too long on it. At to proclaim is a Roch. And then I could choose one of these, and I'm going to go for this one here, which as we saw on a standard chart, this is under a Z, but it's actually this C, okay? So there we go. And you can see, because they're pointing left, I should make that clear. I said this way on the first video, and you don't know which way I was pointing. This is the left, pointing to the left. So we start up, down, so Kelvin Ross. Kelvin Ross. Put it inside this ring. The cartouche, if you remember, which signifies, yeah, this is a name. And we're going to be looking at the initials. We're not just going to read what it means, all right? So there we go. So keeps the way of writing uh, safe and speaks with certainty. I love that. Kelvin Ross. See the fun you can have? Okay. Now we're going to do another one here. <clears throat> one of the followers of the, the work and a fan of the site is Peter. So we're going to try to do Peter, okay? So what you would do if you want to do your own name, <clears throat> you grab the dictionary, there's loads of P's, here's the first few, and pick one you fancy, all right? So probably look at this column. You've got all the English words. So in this case, we've got chief or leader, which is quite cool. And you've got the drawing of a lion's head, which again is very cool. So hey, let's go with that. Um, uh, is pe, we'll go with pe. We could, remember, put the corn in to give an e eh sound. So you can say chief he is. So I could have included the corn as well then. I think I do in the final one. And here's quite a cool one because I know Peter and I know, well, I've never met him, but from messages and stuff, I know he does a lot of traveling. He's got a very almost nomadic lifestyle as he travels from place to place for winter and summer months. So he's like an explorer. So this is just great. A tremaniv. You see the three hills there? One hill, two hill, three. In, die, tree. Hill in Welsh is manith. Tree manith gives tremanith. 
Explorer. Perfect. And I'm going to try another E, so use the E again. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, there it is, right at the top. Can't see for looking. So there's your corn, Eden or Adden. And it's he, she. He, she, his, her. It's quite a flexible word, very useful. And again, you can see where it comes from the Moses book. Anyway, so have that. Pets. Now we've got pet, air, ra. So we need a ra to go on the end. And we'll have a little look. There's a few options. And here we go. Now, if you notice, um, I've done it differently. This is going to be pet air. Well, what I decided here, it, it, it was getting quite difficult. So we got we got petra, petra, petra. It, it's hard because it's got a tut rut sound. It was actually quite difficult to get pitter or petter or peter. And that is, brings on to a point that you need to use the Welsh version of a name. So peter in Welsh is peder. So you see places like Llampeder. Yeah, uh, you can uh, place in West Wales, and we got uh, Peter's um, church up on um, the hill near here, the one Alan Wilson's got, and it's Peder again. Okay, so for Peder, we got a great one here because we got a word which actually says Ped, because four, so there's four of these or four of these, and these can have added significance, but for now we'll just stick with in die three Ped war, in die three Ped war. So when you see four of something, what we're trying to do is dig out the word ped, which is to carry or take forward, okay? And you'll see that in uh, various texts. Oh, it's right by the lion there as well. Okay, pedder, pedder. So then we got, we're back to um, the one I use from uh, proclaiming, because I think this is quite cool. It could just be simple as this, pedder, pedder. So you've got Peter, he's going forth and proclaiming. Um, well, I never really described what the full translation of the first Peter version was, wasn't it? Um, uh, so he's he's the chieftain who explores in short terms. We can look at the full meaning, go back a bit. So I could do it this way. Again, Peder. And what we do again, if these had additional meaning, like they could be uh, marks. So they could be Ped Nod. And you could look up Nod, put a bit of extra meaning in. But I think this is pretty cool. If you're going to do a cartouche like this, that would be Peder. So if you think of the old uh, St. Peter, perhaps, or something, you'd be looking for something like this, I would think. Okay, so we've got another one here now. Uh, we jumped around a bit. If you can remember, if you can remember this one, this is the... Uh, yeah, a little look at that, see if you can work out whose name's been done here, which would be impressive. <laughs> now, I've done this one, because another one of um, our new, new followers is Joseph. It actually spells his name with one F, I noticed, not a PH. So he's Joseph, which is quite cool. So, um, so a bit Welsh, I guess. Although there's no J in Welsh, so you'd have to become Yosef. And this is the problem. If you go back to Joseph originally being an Arabic name, it's probably something like Yusef. Yusef would be the original. So what we got here, you can look this up, or I showed it earlier. Again, we've got the A. Uh, A. Uh, Uskravani. So because there's no, we're going to use the us, and this is fertile. This is great. I love this. Because you've got the land, you see? And this is the seeds under the land. They're going to grow into plants. <laughs> so this is the fertile. So you put them together, we get Usef. Usef. That's the way of writing Joseph or Usef. Now I want to talk a bit about Joseph. A slight detour here. And this is an extract from uh, Moses in the Hieroglyphs. Because we can find this uh, Joseph, or, uh, Joseph, sorry, I apologise. And I'll just, I hate reading what's already on a screen, you can read it yourself. But um, what we're trying to say here is that Joseph would have been Joseph, which he spelt with a J. That would have been an I, which explains later in the book. So it'd be Joseph. Now what there, you can read it in more detail, but this ties in with the biblical character Joseph. So King Joseph is a possibly Joseph and you can read the book and find out more details but what you will find is that Joseph is um, agreed to be the th founder of what is called the third dynasty although it's not really dynasties but hey here we go the point is he's not the son of anybody he got appointed to the role rather than inheriting the role 
So he's, uh, Joseph is said to have been given, this from the Bible and other sources, given the Egyptian princess Asenath as his wife. And so Joseph and Joseph immediately have something in common. Egyptian records are believed to show that the mother or wife of Joseph was named as Nemath. King Joseph is also said to have ascended the throne following the marriage of a Delta princess named Nemathap to the southern king Kar-Sekumi. And this queen rejoiced in the title of king-bearing mother. There's also some confusion over King Joseph as he alleged to have had the Horus name of Netiket. As, some other as long as some other titles. And you can read the rest of all this about how the story of Joseph in the Bible ties in uh, with Joseph, which is great because as you go through this, you'll see that it does explain why there's a big, why they, you can't see any, um, why they've been able to, unable to find so far any traces of Joseph in Egypt, whereas actually there is, and there's um, monuments, and he's built a sort of pyramid, step pyramid as well. And always can be witnessed. Anyway, here's another one to puzzle about, which you've got very little chance if you haven't seen the dictionary. <laughs> right, what we're going to do is work out. First thing is, what on earth is this? What on earth is this? Well, the only animal that seems to have anything like this called a neck is a camel. Okay. I'm just going to double check exactly how we describe this in our dictionary because it's a bit tricky. So, uh, right, okay. So it's called, um, in the old, they call it a camel leopard. And I think the leopard would be resolved because they've got sort of spots and this long neck. So it's a camel leopard. And what we've come up with here, and Wilson's come up with, which works brilliantly all the way through when you try it, it's a mighty horse. It's going to make me an old Welsh word, perhaps, for a uh, camel. So you have gaurmarch. So march is a knight so this is represents a knight as in a um, you know a heroic knight galloping around a place and you do see this repeated in places where that would make sense so this is a knight and it's maur this you already know seen it a few times already can you remember the t the t for you are so knight you are and then we got this novio to keep the knight you are to keep you know to protect something or to look after novio so you worked out what name that is yet ma -n. martin there we go so that's for another one of our new followers martin who's shown a great interest in this subject so i've put that up there for him if you want to put some comments below maybe get your name shown in hieroglyphs a future episode i'm happy to do that or just send it back to you. Let's uh, have some fun with this. And what's the next one we got? Here's another person who contributes a lot of comments on the videos and the groups and has been very active in the work of Wilson and Blackett. So let's see if we can work this one out. Now then, this this one is a bit of a puzzler, I have to admit. It's a banner or flag, so it can be banon with a, with a buh. You've also got Manon, and this partly this is to do with the Welsh mutations, which you do have to look out for. I'm not going to go through all of that. You can look it up yourself. But what happens in Welsh, to avoid, it's a beautiful sounding language. And to avoid something clashing, you often do what's called mutation. Like, um, uh, oh, my mind's gone blank. Instead of back in da, you change the da to a the, back in da. And um, a girl, Merched, would become Verched in certain circumstances, okay? It's to make it easier to say it sounds easier on the ear. And it does mean sometimes you have to be a little bit careful when you're looking up the meaning of a word in a dictionary and then you have to decide if you want to mutate it or not. That, I would say, is the only tricky bit. And the more I look at it, I think that mutation, again, ties in with the hieroglyphs. They work so beautifully, it's part of it. So instead of... Um, Banon in this situation, hang on, I'm looking up in M in the dictionary, because you have Manon, which is like the queen, the queen or exalted person, successor, let's so be the queen successor, I was going to put a little, the symbols up there for the princess, which I alluded to in the first video, we'll have to come again next one, I left them off, so you've got the successor to keep, and this one here, we've 
got. Uh oh, I've forgotten a second. Hang on, I can look that up very quickly. Because we know I had it in front of me. Ah! All right, we'll come up with that in a second. But I will tell you that's um, that I. That's an I sound. Oh, yeah, let's go to I. My dictionary. There we go. Easy enough. Which is a yoke. That's a yoke. You can imagine there's a um, couple of bulls under there being held by this yoke, being held firm. There's not a lot of it words in the hieroglyphs, but this one works quite well because it means a linguist or someone who is uh, having language or an interpreter. They've got those sort of similar roots there. So you've got someone who's an interpreter who passes on the message ardently, ardently or with zealously. So you've got someone here, the queen successor who keeps the translation message ardently so someone who translates and gives an ardent message and is a, a, a illustrious person and successor and follower and there we are we got monica how cool is that there we are so i hope you're watching monica i know you watch all these videos i hope you like to see your name up there and there's a possible cartouche for your name shown on it okay could say more we do more examples and i will do some more examples in the future you can do any name um the fun is trying to get the words to make a nice sentence and it does get difficult if the words aren't welsh with welsh words it really is very easy same with egyptian words because the words are designed to work like kelvin for example i mean that just works a treat but sometimes you've got x's and z's and sounds which don't work so well and you have to work a little bit harder or like we have to do with peter translate to pedder so remember um, if you've got a name, <laughs> everyone's got a name. <laughs> if I, well, the first thing you want to do if your name is not directly working in Welsh is look up is places you can go on the internet. Say, what's the Welsh for such and such name? Like Jane becomes Sean. You know, the J is awkward J. There's no Jane in Welsh. J in Welsh. So Sean and Jane. Jane. It doesn't even sound similar sometimes. Sean for John, stuff like that. Okay, so check that out first. And then you'll find it translates pretty easily. And it all works very nicely. So next we're going to look at is going to be titles, get a little bit more technical, and it's quite exciting how you can see combinations that really do say certain things. So a quick summary here. Remember, this is a phonetic sound-based system. You see something, you say the word for it, okay? They are not letters. There's not spelling involved. This is why conventional uh, reading of hieroglyphs is in such a mess. Because they're trying to read them as letters forming words, whereas no. Each one is a word that forms a sentence. Admittedly, there are a couple of times when a couple of smaller words are grouped together to make a longer word. But generally, they're one word each, all right? And we'll show some examples where they're combined to make a longer word. But again, it's very, just like English, if you put two words together to make a long word, I'm trying to make, I don't know, conjunction, I don't know, anything that's uh, a combined word. Doorstep, there you go, doorstep. Door and step combined to make one longer word. So it's not alphabetical. We're not spelling things apart from inside the rings, that's the cartouches. You can use initials or the first sounds like a, an acronym. Remember the example of NATO is exactly the same as that. Use the first letters of the words and that spells the name. All right. So initials, first sounds are used to spell names, but they are still words and you can read them. And those words are used to describe the person. So you can have a lot of fun coming up with some uh, person of multiple speaking, you know, person who speaks a lot, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> it's easy peasy. It really is easy peasy. OK, so there we are. Thanks very much for watching. These books are available uh, from the Cumberglyphics.com websites or on eBay or on Amazon. So have fun and we can send them out even during this coronavirus and you can learn a new skill. So when you go back, you've got something to tell your friends and you can even draw these and make them and have all sorts of fun. Next installment coming very soon. And I try and do them every day and now I've got the hang of the technology. Hopefully that will be possible. So thanks for bearing with me. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave comments. Let me know how you find it. Well, you can do your own names. All the fun, some questions. And I look forward to hearing from you. So until the next time, Hevuch. <laughs>